It's all about youth expressing their views on all matters lit. That is, issues that matter to us. Youth Express! Exploring issues that affect the young people of our region. Youth Express! Hi, we're back with another exciting series of Youth Express. This program is produced by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank to give young people the opportunity to express themselves on ideas and issues that affect and matter to them. On this season, we take a look at food security. We'll hear what young people think about this issue and how they are contributing to food security. Stay right where you are, we'll be back. Ripe, delicious, lush, nutritious. We come in all shapes and sizes, colors and shades, raw or cooked, sweet or bitter, Soft, crunchy, fragrant, pungent. All of us unique and special. Full of fiber, vitamins and minerals, history, culture and traditions. We don't just fill your plate, we fill your stories and memories. Long and short, slim and plump. Sometimes awkward or misshapen, forgotten or neglected, but never ever ugly, whatever people say. Because we're what really makes you tick, what makes your eyes sparkle and your smile dazzle. We are fruits and vegetables, simply beautiful. Thanks for staying connected. When our countries and our households can access good quality foods consistently, and at reasonable prices, then we are assured of high food security. The opposite scenario means that we have low food security. What do young people think about the issue of food security? Is it something that concerns them? What are they doing about it? Today we meet two young men who are doing their part to contribute to food security in their respective countries. But before we do, Director of Agriculture in the Government of St. Kitts and Nevis, Dr. Tracy Challenger, puts the issue of food security into context. Food security is when a country has that ability to produce safe and nutritious food for its population in a sustainable manner. And when I say sustainable manner, I mean that there is no compromise to the land, the air, and water. Food security also refers to the ability of those persons in the agricultural sector or the food sector to be able to make a living from the food that they produce. So therefore, economic viability is an important part of food security. The level of food security that a country has is very important because in times of crisis, food security builds resilience. I take, for example, COVID-19. No one anticipated the number of lockdowns that took place. People were not allowed to go to the supermarkets to purchase food. That was a food security concern. And at another level, food security from the from an external basis. What, what would have happened if the boats didn't come? How long would the food on the ground last um, if we did not have an external supply of food? During this process, um, we at the Agriculture Department, we had to do an assessment to determine how long would the food on the ground last? I certainly believe that everyone has a part to play in food security. Even if it's just a backyard garden or you own in one or two animals, okay? Because as they say, one one fill basket. So this is, is very important. Everyone has to a part to play in food security. For 
for me, food security is us eating and with us without us eating and having accessible food, we can't live. In a nutshell, it's how available is food to the people. Devon Laurent hails from the Commonwealth of Dominica. He has a passion for agro-processing, turning raw material into a finished product. He does this through his natural healthcare company, Sensual Sensations. What I do is I make infused oils. So for in regards to the, the major spices that I use would be things like cinnamon, clove, garlic, ginger, and then in regards to the herb side, or uh, we tend to make infused oils out of everything. But then the majority ones are the rosemary, rose, hibiscus, aloe vera, because those, those, are, those are the ones that are readily available. However, the end result is to make infused oils from every single thing out there. Instead of because what started the focus into the, all the different plants was having looked at our market in Dominica and I realized there's a lot of coconut oils, there are a lot of castor oils, but there is nothing else. And then I started to do research and figure out but there are oils in every plant. So why are we only focusing on just two? And that's where I came up with the idea of, okay, let's start, uh, let's start infused oils. In Antigua and Barbuda, Kwesi Javis supports the local farmers by buying a variety of fruits in bulk to sustain his juice business. The main aim of the business is to provide a healthy option as it comes to beverages in fast food joints, supermarkets, all over. Anywhere that you can buy food, you must have a healthy option for drinking. Example of the products that I buy, sour sap, tamran, passion fruit, lemons, uh, carrots, beets, anything that can make natural juice, I purchase them. Some of the challenges that I see to food security in general, the amount of people that produce certain products, certain foods, that is a challenge. We need more people out there that are not will that, that, that are willing. We need more people out there that are willing to uh, invest not only in food security, but invest in growing certain crops. In our foods, if we were to compare the nutritional value from a tomato 20 years ago to one now, mm -hmm. the one of now, I can guarantee it's a lot less nutritious. It might be bigger, it might be juicier, but it is less nutritious. And if we were to actually start to look at our nutritional value of our food, then we would have to be food conscious and that would create a food security movement across the entire world. While getting involved in agriculture may not readily attract young people, mainly because it is seen as hard labor, getting down and dirty in the lands, Dr. Challenger implores young people to rethink their hesitancy as times have changed and so have many of the ways in which things are done in agriculture you know, um, getting messy, your hands in the dirt. So that is a deterrent for the younger population. They want more science, more technically savvy um, production systems to attract them. So this is the area that we are venturing to right now to attract the young people. Also, we, have, we are going into the schools to teach, to provide education on these, te these techniques. There is an aspect called biotechnology that is actually working in a laboratory. For example, a tissue culture lab, working in a diagnostic lab, doing surveillance um, to, to identify diseases that would affect the livestock and to put mitigations in place to protect the livestock. All this form a part of food security. If Devon and Kwesi were ministers of agriculture for their respective countries, here are the measures they would put in place to ensure that their countries can boast a high level of food security. Freeing up more land so farmers have more space to plant, giving more plots for planting. The more land that is available, the more food that can be produced. The more food that's produced, the higher the security. I would revise how we use the land we already have because 
our current agricultural practices tend to focus heavily on monoculture, where you have one plant every three to four feet. But in the forest, there is nowhere on the earth where that happens naturally, yet no one has to fertilize them. So I believe we have a fundamental flaw with how we do agriculture to begin with. So the first thing I would do was to start a campaign as to see how does the forest survive and thrive with no inter human intervention whatsoever, and then mimic that system because then eventually we would be able to develop self-sustainable farms with little to no manual input. And that is when the food security would start to be, to be great. For another episode of Youth Express. Thank you for watching. Look out for another interesting program coming your way next week where we'll continue to talk with young people about this important issue of food security. We'll meet a young farmer from Montserrat and a doctor from St. Lucia who has traded her white coat and office for a greenhouse. Don't you miss it. Youth Express!